This was at six o'clock in the morning. All the raids had been timed, synchronized to be the, at the same time. And we knew that the craze the night before had been to a West End club. Uh, they were taken out of their beds. They're, they're, they caused us no concern or, or, or trouble at all. How much danger were you in during the inquiry? Well, it's difficult to, to gauge, really. There were suggestions from various sources that there was some personal danger. I took what I considered to be reasonable precautions. I used to go home frequently on a different route, and also uh, I go running in the mornings about five miles every morning. Uh, when I was interviewed by the press, I denied this emphatically because I considered that at that time in the morning, alone in a, a vest and running shorts, I would be very vulnerable, unless I could run faster than them, of course. It's been said a police officer develops some sort of relationship with the criminals that he's hunting. What relationship did you have with the twins? Well, there was no real relationship between the craze and myself. I'd known them for some time, but I never felt any animosity towards them. This was a, a facade that was built up, I think, by the craze. They projected this to the public generally, that this was some sort of hate campaign between themselves and the police, and particularly myself, but this is not the case at all. I know that they disliked me intensely. I know that they, at one stage, bought a snake which they called Nipper Reed, and there was great jubilation when this, this snake died. Ronald Cray, I understand, used to feed it live mice. One assumes you had to use um, fairly unorthodox methods on occasions. Well, of course. Uh, all detectives use disguises, as you know. In this case, probably more than most. Uh, we used a variety of disguises, and, and uh, they were quite successful. For instance, I, from time to time, posed as a parson, uh, as a dustman, and uh, as a road sweeper, and this kind of thing. One of my officers, I think, even posed as a BBC television interviewer. What about the use of um, so-called double agents? We did employ this from time to time, and very successfully. Uh, of course, a double agent can never be fully trusted, and bearing that in mind, they were used mainly to... Uh, influenced the craze that, that we were taking certain action, whereas in fact we were not. In other words, to feed them completely false and bogus information. How does this case differ to all the others that you've had a hand in? Uh, it was completely independent from New Scotland Yard. We broke away entirely from the normal routine. I had to answer only to the Deputy Assistant Commissioner, Mr. John DeRose, and in that light it was quite different from other inquiries. It was necessary for secrecy to be maintained. This was most important. And uh, towards that end, Detective Superintendent Donald Adams handpicked most of the men that came onto the inquiry subsequently. Originally, the officer who was deputed to under undertake this investigation had to let it be known amongst his colleagues that he had been given a confidential inquiry concerning a domestic matter within, within the force. In those circumstances, nobody troubled to ask him any further questions but as the team was augmented it became obvious that some people might learn something of what was happening with that in view the whole of the team was transferred from New Scotland Yard to Tintagel House where we operated quite successfully each and every one of these items was recovered during the course of the Crane fire some of them are quite obvious in their use perhaps the one thing which is unique certainly unique in my experience is this what appears to be perfectly innocuous case? But down here we have a hypodermic syringe. This bottle here was to contain cyanide. The idea of the operation was that this needle here would protrude, not as far as it is at the moment, but just a little way out of the box. And by manipulating this ring here, the, plung the plunger would be released, which would release the cyanide which is inside the hypodermic syringe out into the needle. Now the, the way in which it would have been used would have been to have swung the case so that the needle penetrated the victim. The cyanide would enter the victim's body and he would be dead within eight seconds. It's important to remember that the police can take no action against anyone unless there is evidence available. This, so far as the craze was concerned, was always the difficulty. It was essential, of course, that if the police launched an operation against the craze and their empire, it had to be successful.
we could not afford an abortive inquiry. This would have damaged the police public image and we just could not afford to do that. Uh, it's also important to remember that uh, had this happened, had we had an abortive inquiry, the craze had many influential friends in all sorts of walks of life. And uh, I can visualize that the, a, a, a large complaint would have, would have ensued.